Greetings <clears throat> and welcome to my new And today I'll be talking with you about the derivative differential, or rather vice versa, the differential and the derivative. And we'll be telling you exactly what it is and what it is not. So let's begin. You will have noticed that on much of the internet, information on this topic, but most of it is either incorrect or misleading. So let's see what a differential is not. And any of the following statements are false. So one, in mathematics, differential calculus is a subfield of calculus that studies the rates at which quantities change. That's uh, the, the Wikipedia definition. Now, let me tell you that <clears throat> quantities don't change. And the slope of tangent lines, wherever they are, has been the same uh, in past perpetuity and continues to be the same into future indefinite periods. Okay, so in other words, quantities don't change. Finite differences don't change, right? So... <clears throat> This statement is 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 absurd. It's it's not even meaningful. It's totally ridiculous because it doesn't say anything at all. But it's it happens to be the the mainstream point of view. So the next statement, which is also false, says the following: a differential represents the principal part of the change in the function y is equal to f of x with respect to changes in the independent variable. Now, first of all, these uh, values along the x and the y-axis are not variables. They're actual values, and they too do not vary. They do not change. And of course, uh, a, a given function such as this one here, which is x squared, has a fixed number of pairs. Yes, they're innumerable, but they're fixed. They don't vary. So uh, the x's don't vary with the y's. Each pair has a unique x and y, and there's no change and no variability. So that statement is also complete garbage. The third statement says dy dx, dy over dx must at least for some considerable time be regarded as an inseparable, inseparable whole, just as small delta x is. It does not in any simple or straightforward way mean anything like dy divided by dx, and a statement such as this, by cancelling dx, is just so much gibberish. It turns out that the exact opposite of that is true. Hillary and Sherard were just two moronic English uh, math academics who, first of all, didn't understand mathematics, never mind calculus. So it is true that dy over dx times dx over dt is indeed equal to dy over dt. And you shall see shortly why. The next statement that is wrong is that dy and dx are actually limits, as you see here. So dy would be the limit of the numerator as h approaches 0, and dx the limit of the denominator as h approaches 0. There's only one problem with that. If both of them approach 0, like that, you'd have an undefined, and in fact, let's put it over there just to, to, to make the point clear. Let's put it over there. Um, here we go. Like that, and like that. So it says as they approach, but as you can see, the finite difference up here is meaningless. It's undefined if that ever happens. Okay. And so you might say, you might say that well, we're only talking about the limit, but if the limit is not rise, if the limit is not rise over run, then what is it? Okay, so the first problem with this sort of thing is that it's not only circular, but it's flawed in so many ways. Another argument, mainstream argument, is that dy and dx are infinitesimals. Nothing could be more ridiculous in that statement because there is no such thing as an infinitesimal. So any, a differential is not any of these things that you see in front of you. So what is it? Well, 
A differential is simply this, a finite difference. This here is called a finite difference. That is, f of x plus h minus f of x is a difference, and so is h. It's a difference of x plus h minus x. Okay, and according to my geometric theorem, you can rewrite f prime of x as, as what you see on the right-hand side, meaning that dy is equal to this expression and dx is equal to h, or rather that dy is proportional to this expression and dx is proportional to h, right? And so this would give you a, a valid form of differential or finite difference because that's all the differential is. It's a finite difference. There's nothing ethereal about it. Now in my new calculus, dy over dx is defined very rigorously. In fact, it's 100% rigorous. And it's stated down here that dy is proportional or equal to the top part and d and uh, dx is proportional or equal to the bottom part. So this is what a differential is. Now what about a derivative? What is a derivative not? Okay, so none of the following statements are correct. So again, the first one in Wikipedia is, is almost laughable. It says, in mathematics, the derivative of a function of a real variable measures the sensitivity. <laughs> Whatever, what does sensitivity mean? To change of the function value with respect to a change in its argument. Now, you know, the fools at Wikipedia have constantly been changing their entries because I've constantly been correcting them. They do not want to accept that I am correct and what I tell them is true. So they just simply try to find ways every time around what I tell them. But of course, that statement is utter garbage because the derivative of a function has nothing to do with change or sensitivity or real numbers, which, by the way, don't exist, okay? And function values uh, that change because no function values change. If you look at a mapping, it's, it's fixed. Every uh, x goes to some f of x and nothing is changing there. Okay, the x's don't change, neither do the f of x's. They're both different sets which are fixed. The second statement is the ubiquitous uh, mainstream definition, which is absolute garbage, okay? And I've explained this in a previous video. So if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see why this statement here is correct. And I've given you six reasons why this statement is correct. I'm not going to cover them again in this video. Number three, the derivative is a ratio dy to t dx or a fraction dy to dx of infinitesimals, dy and dx. Again, that's absolute garbage because dy and dx are not infinitesimals because infinitesimals don't exist, okay? So the derivative is a rate of change or instantaneous rate of change, which is false because it has nothing to do with change. The derivative is a slope of the half tangent lines of equal slope. In other words, the same formula here, but taking the half tangent from the left and the half tangent from the right. But of course, if you just drew a point, if you decided you were going to stick to half tangents and you drew a point anywhere along here, you could, for example, have just said something like, uh, you could have drawn that and said, okay, well, that that's also like a tangent in the sense that it only touches at one point. Okay but it's circular because it actually depends on the original definition of tangent, which is the one that you see uh, in the work of Newton and others. <clears throat> so the derivative um, is the limit of a converging sequence of finite differences. Now, <laughs> it can't be because there is no difference. Uh, there is no fraction of finite differences such that this expression on the top over this expression on the bottom will give you the derivative, okay? Now, notice there are many such dy dx's, and it doesn't matter where you take the slope, the derivative remains unchanged, okay? So dy and dx are symbolic values. <clears throat> so that's what a derivative is not. And basically, a derivative is just a fraction of finite differences, dy to dx. And it is understood that both dy and dx are symbolic magnitudes or numbers that represent some equivalent finite difference, like I showed you here. Some equivalent finite difference. These are the finite difference fractions, yes? 
And the finite differences dy and dx are magnitudes of the slope of a given tangent line, of this red tangent line. In other words, dy to dx is rise over run. I had Newton and Leibniz used or chosen to use angle instead of rise over run, every derivative function would have a range of minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So for example, in this applet, to which I'll place a link, um, you'll see that if you draw the function in this form, it's always going to lie between pi, minus pi over 2, which is this bottom orange line, and pi over 2. Okay, so that would be the derivative function right over there. So the range will always lie between pi over 2 and minus pi over 2. So finally, just to demonstrate again that Schuart's, uh, Schuart's nonsense about dy times dx is not true, we can actually look at two particular functions and see that as we move them along, we, we actually can cancel out the 1.5 and the, and the uh, dy as we go along, okay? And we can change these values if we want, like that or like that. And we'll see that the only time that you will get a problem is if there's a zero that is, that is, part, that is a differential. So the zero can be the top differential, but it can't be the bottom differential. So there's really no problem there because derivative, fractions of derivative of differentials work exactly the same as fractions of numbers. So fractions of differentials work exactly the same as fractions of numbers. So there you have it. That's pretty much it. I hope you've now understood everything there is to know about derivatives and differentials. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Tell your friends about it. Uh, also go to my Odyssey channel where you can donate dollars or credits. And that's pretty much it for now. I'm John Gabriel. This is a new calculus channel. Till next time. Goodbye.